There have been 91 keepers that have appeared in the Football League for Chesterfield. These range from Jim Hancock, who kept goal at Ollerton in 1899, to Joe Anion, who was the keeper in our last, for the moment, league game. In picking out some of the notable keepers, we have had to start with Sam Hardy. Sam was famously signed under a gaslight in his home village of Newbold. After 71 games for the Lucky Whites, as the Chesterfield Town team was nicknamed, Sam joined Liverpool for £500 and the promise of a friendly. We never got the friendly. After 200 plus games for the Reds, he played more than 100 times for Villa and Forest. He won the league once and the FA Cup twice. Sam Hardy was also England's first choice keeper for 14 years. Today that would mean over 100 caps. However, with only a couple of internationals each year and the interruption of the First World War, Sam retired with 21 England caps. Also in our first league spell, Tom Cope made 127 appearances as Hardy's replacement. He was less technical but more athletic, earning himself two broken collarbones while with the town. Between the wars, Jack Moody was the dominant force between the sticks. Sheffield Borney played for Arsenal before becoming Manchester United's first choice keeper. We signed him from there and he made 184 appearances, the fourth most for the club. He was renowned for being a strong keeper who was capable of hoofing the leather ball into the opponent's half. Arnold Birch was a Chesterfield keeper from Sheffield who honed his skills while a Royal Navy internee in Holland. He played for Bequick and won a divisional title with them. After a number of games for Sheffield Wednesday, he joined town and made 141 appearances. More notably, he was the designated penalty taker in 1923 and so scored five times. In terms of his performance while with the club, Ray Middleton was probably the best ever keeper. He joined from North Shields for a fee of £50 in 1937 and once he debuted, he was the first choice for 15 years. This meant he made 250 league appearances with another 250 wartime games. While with the club he was called up for England B four times and might have gone to the 1950 World Cup but for a mistake in a victory against Luxembourg which was the only international goal he conceded. He was the first current professional footballer to become a Justice of the Peace. Ron Powell made 471 league appearances for Chesterfield. 284 of these were consecutive until a youngster called Gordon Banks replaced him. He became the club's number one again after this and but for being injured in the crash that killed Ralph Hunt might have threatened Dave Blakey's appearance record. What have happened to that young chap called Banks who had been a star in the youth FA Cup run? On the opposite side in the final for Man U was a lad called Bobby Charlton. I don't know whether they met again. After 23 league appearances, Leicester took a punt of 6,000 on Gordon, and the rest is history. Alan Stevenson was famously picked up from his home in Staveley to make a surprise debut and was part of the 1969-70 championship side. After more than 100 games, he joined Burnley and played for them in 438 league games. He was a regular in the England under-23s, including a game opposite Jim Brown, but he only made the bench for the full England side. Jim Brown made 182 appearances in his two spells and was still on the bench when in his mid-40s and the club's commercial manager. Between his spells, he represented Scotland in Bucharest back in the days of black and white. He was, of course, the first Chesterfield keeper to score since Arnold Birch with this goal against Stockport. Local lad Phil Tingey served the club for nine seasons, but was hardly ever the first choice. Despite this, he clocked up 181 league games to make him sixth on the all-time list. His second ever game was in front of 45,000 at Villa Park. John Turner cost... £120,000 and played 132 times as part of the stylish Cox Barlow side of the early 80s. He was a mainstay of the Anglo-Scottish Cup squad, only missing the final through injury. He was in demand by Everton, but Chesterfield held out for a fee that would have smashed records, and the deal fell through. Chris Marples was the last true joint cricket and football professional. He turned out for club and county simultaneously. Nicknamed Jed by Bob Newton, 
He made 141 league appearances in two spells with Town. In between, he joined York for a record fee after cash strapped Town sold him to Stockport. He now concentrates on coaching in the summer game. Mick Lennon made 176 appearances for Chesterfield, including becoming the first keeper to come on as a substitute. He was instrumental in the run to the 1990 playoff final and can confirm that it was never a corner. Billy Mercer was first choice at Saltgate for four years, including the FA Cup run, where he was man of the match in the Wrexham quarter-final and then played in the semi-final games. He was renowned for being one of the less flashy goalkeepers. He was sold to Bristol Rovers for 250000 after 149 league games for the Spyrites. Barry Roach played 126 league games for the Spyrites and has since become a legend at Morecambe where he's been awarded a testimonial. Sometimes a keeper has a shorter spell with the club but leaves his mark. Billy Stewart played in our 1995 Wembley win and went to sign on the next day. Steve Cherry was a hero at Bramall Lane in 1989 and has won at Wembley four times in his career. Martin Fulop was a loanee from Spurs who went on to play for Hungary 24 times. He was taken by cancer while still playing professionally. Another keeper taken too soon was Mark Kendall who is regarded as the club's ultimate cult player. His recall by Spurs was opposed by the player and he was subsequently given an award when he returned to the club with Newport. The last on this list is the man celebrating his testimonial as this dinner takes place. Tommy Lee has had 10 seasons at the club. This has included two promotions and a Wembley win. He's played 328 league games for the Spyrites. The poor seasons while he's been with the club have come when he's spent a large part of the time injured. He sits second in the all-time appearances for a goalkeeper.